Good morning. How are y'all doing? Great. From Nashville, Tennessee. Thanks for having me here. This is so exciting. Um, so I was impressed when I heard about the women who are coming to this. I want you to raise your hand if you're an entrepreneur. Raise your hand if you are leading a business. Raise your hand if you are thinking about starting a business. Okay, great. Well, this is the right group. So I started my business at 21, and I can talk to you guys about how to grow your business really fast rate. I can tell you all kind of really cool tips and tricks because I have five companies now, just turned 30, and they're worth around $100 million. So we could talk about that, and that's really cool, but I would much rather talk to you about how to stay in the game because I'm freaking busy. All right? <laughs> I don't just fly around and talk because I'm freaking busy and have a lot to do, but the most important thing that I could possibly do is to empower other world changers. And just knowing who is in this room and where we are in the world, I know that you have that capacity. So if I can share a little bit of my story, which is filled with horrors and pain and nightmares and all kind of crazy things that have happened over the last 10 years. And if it helps you remember that you should stay in the game, then the world is a better place. Is that what y'all came here for today? Great. And then we're going to keep going. <clears throat> Who understands that you have only one life? Raise your hand. You got one chance on this earth, people. That's it. So we probably shouldn't be as scared as we act. You have one life, so we should make it count. I was extremely blessed that at a young age, I figured out um, some things that mattered. I actually was forced to write my eulogy at 17 years old. It was part of this class I was in, and it was one of the exercises. And when you write your eulogy, you realize what really matters. And at 17, everything that I wanted to be true at the end of my life, I realized I wasn't doing anything about. I was always a passionate person. I always really cared about people. From, from 12, I knew I wanted to be a missionary and serve in the most um, desperate places in the world. That's what I wanted to do. So those are cool aspirations. But what the heck was I doing about it? So I realized at that age that I should probably do something about it. So I started going on these mission trips. And it sounds amazing. Like, oh man, you're going to go change the world. Great. So cool. I'm in Africa. I'm like, this is going to be awesome. But, well, real quick, I'm a pretty raw person. Do I have permission to be vulnerable with y'all today? Yes. Who's going to judge me? Raise your hand. <laughs> Feel free. I don't care. Um, <laughs> perfect. Right. Somebody's honest. Um, if I offend you, just leave. I don't care. Um, <laughs> So it, I, went to, um, I went to Africa, and it was awesome. Everybody's like, that's so great you're going. And to be honest with you, I was really pissed, like, the whole time. And I felt so guilty. I'm like, oh, you're not supposed to be pissed the whole time you're on a mission trip. But I was pissed because I was in this place, and I'm feeding these kids, and I realized it wasn't really making a long-term impact. And... When you are frustrated, I want to encourage all of you that that is one of the most incredible experiences that you can possibly have. Because frustration is born from missed expectation. So you have two opportunities when you're frustrated. You either can become a hater, complainer, activist, and just whine about everything and talk crap, or you can say, you know why I'm frustrated? I have the vision of a higher standard. Why don't I take that higher standard and bridge that gap. Why don't I do something about it? And so for me, again, I planned from 12 years old to 18, my entire life was I was just gonna move to Africa at 18, live in a mud hut and serve people. That's what I wanted to do. But I was so pissed, I'm like, God bless, I gotta do something better than this because it's not really changing. And so I started asking God, again, I don't care if you're offended, I'm a speaker. So, <laughs> I started asking God from a young age, I'm like, how do you really create sustainable change? How do you knock out these issues, these reasons that people are selling their kids into sex slavery for $25? How do you, how do you fix 
the reason that that's even happening at its root instead of just treating it topically. So that's the journey that I have been on. Um, I had no idea it would be by getting into business. So I actually went through EMT school, I went through survival school, and I was ready to go. And I was at that, I was at that the school, um, it was a survival and leadership training school. I was, again, I was planning to move to Africa, frustrated, but planning. And this guy came in, and he was a millionaire. And at the time, I thought all rich people were bad. I really did. I was like, they're greedy, evil, blah, blah. They have no, they're not helping anybody. They're just standing on the back of their yachts, throwing money off while there's dying children in the world. And so I actually didn't want to hear this guy. And so you have to be very aware of the filters that you have in your life that are blocking you from being everything that you can be, the little things that you're judging people on. Be open. Now he was in the class and he said, who in here has gone on a mission trip? I raised my hand. Finally, I can participate in whatever this guy's saying. And uh, he said, who in here has had to raise money for that mission trip? I was like, who did not like that process? Did you know that you can buy a house, this is in 2007, I remember, with no money down, and if your mortgage payment is $1,200 or $900 a month, and you rent it out for $1,200 a month, you get to keep that $300. I'm 18 at the time. Go on. <laughs> Do that 10 times and you can live in Africa and you don't have to ask anybody for money. And I was like, genius. <laughs> so in 2007, I'm 18 years old. This is me in front of my first house. I was a waitress and I bought my first house. And I was so excited because I'm like, I'm off to the races. I'm going to build this thing called cash flow and I'm moving. Everything's going to be great. And in the process of buying it, I heard about this thing called flipping houses. Has anybody heard about that? I had not heard of it at the time. And I heard if you buy a crappy house, fix it up, and sell it, you could make like $10,000, which is a billion dollars to an 18 year old. <laughs> and then if you save those chunks of $10,000, you could have $100,000. Then you could buy an apartment complex, and then that makes $10,000 a month. And then I can build my own freaking orphanages and nobody can mess with me. <laughs> Who likes the idea of nobody being able to mess with you and your calling? Please raise your hand. <laughs> I loved that idea. And I had this like horrible vision of some sponsorship check coming in late and this child dying in my arms. So I was like, screw that. I'm going to make my own money. So that was the inspiration. So I don't know if anybody else has had a holy sounding idea where you your heart is pure you want to do something great for the world and so you want to set out on this journey to do something great i mean i just want to save babies that's why i wake up in the morning and so you think if you've got all these great intentions it's going to be smooth especially if you're a god-fearing person like god will open the doors wrong you have the ability to grow as a person so that you can handle more um, I don't know if anybody ever heard about that economic crash that happened around 2007, 2008, 2009. Probably didn't affect any of you, but uh, it had a minor effect on my ability to get started in the business. So first, I actually Googled what colleges teach you how to flip houses. Nothing popped up. Can you imagine? I was like, I guess I'm not going to college. Family wasn't super fan of that idea back then. It's much cooler now the 14 year old or the 11 year old that's in the room. It's much cooler now, it's fine, it's acceptable. Uh, was not acceptable there, but I thought, you know, I'll just learn this another way. So I should probably find someone and learn from them. <clears throat> After three years of abysmal failure, I finally got the opportunity of a lifetime to, through waitressing, crazy story, I'm gonna skip to the end. I end up moving to Nashville to learn the business and work for this guy. And I'm like, it's going to be great. And I was like, you're an idiot. Friends, you're an idiot. Don't get into real estate right now. It's the worst thing you could possibly do. I actually don't watch TV, so I didn't know <laughs> that there was an economic meltdown. I actually just thought it was me that was a failure. <laughs> that was stupid. But anyway, so I moved to Nashville on faith. I'm like, it's going to work out. It's going to be great. And I take a job that's $600 less than the minimums on my credit card. So during those three years of failure, 
everything going wrong, I had accru accumulated a lot of debt. I definitely paid my minimums. I never haven't paid my bills, but it was pretty stressful. Has anybody, you don't even have to raise your hand, anybody been stressed the freak out by debt? <laughs> All right, it's the worst. It's like somebody stepping on your chest, crushing you from your inside out. Hate that feeling. So. Moved to Nashville, never been there before. It's six hours away from all my family and friends. Don't know anybody. And I'm like, I'm gonna make it. It's gonna be great. Within 60 days, I get fired. They just do away with the position. I had rented my house out, the one in this picture, to these guys on Craigslist. Again, I had already taken $600 less than the minimums on my credit cards. The first month's rent check bounced. And then I have to go evict these guys. So I've got a mortgage. I have no job. Can't tell anybody I get fired, of course. And they think I'm a failure. And I don't know anybody. I'm 21, a girl in the real estate development and construction business. This is going to go great. <laughs> but on the day I get fired, I find these guys who are flipping houses. And I said, can I work for you for free? Most people in that situation would try to take first because you're in survival mode. And a lot of people in survival mode drown the people that save them. But over those three years of pain, the one thing I did learn was to give first. So find people who are doing what you're wanting to do and you give first. So I ended up working for free and living in my car on and off for about nine months in 2009. I didn't get paid a dime except for like $200 here and there renting out their apartment portfolio. So I was, I was super skinny, I looked great. But I learned the business. I learned how to find projects. I learned how to fund them. I learned how to manage a crew. I learned how to design. I learned, I learned that business. And again, I had been now f almost four years without having a single dime of real income. But when I did my first house by myself, I became the biggest rehabber in Nashville. Because I had built up that perseverance to work to learn, not just to earn. And that was one of my biggest keys to success. It's not one of the three takeaways, but that is important to remember. Take a job or get in situations where you learn. This group is one of those places. So congratulations, you are all highly intelligent by surrounding yourself with an incredible community of women. So I became the biggest rehabber in Nashville. And then <laughs> I had a contractor after I finally get crushing in, I'm like, yeah, 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 it's great contractor. I had eight houses going um, at this one time. Uh, one of them was a million dollar house, which was a lot in 2012 in Nashville. And he started acting weird. And I was like, hey man, you're, you're the one setting these budgets. You can't keep going over. Just letting you know. <clears throat> started acting real weird. Subs were acting weird. And I was like, oh, well, I'm just glad I told him today. The day I finally told him that, I get 200 phone calls of people that had not been paid in the last three months, even though I had killed myself to pay him. Killed myself! I was working 18 to 21 hours a day at this time, and everything that I thought I had ever made was gone in literally a day. And uh, so it ended up, I thought I'd lost $500,000, which was a freaking lot of money back then. And... Um, I ended up having to repay the subs, take over the jobs, do all these things, and all my investors, again, are surely never going to invest with me because on my dime, I had such an incredible mistake. Anybody ever feel unqualified? Hopefully, by the end of the story, you're going to realize how qualified you probably are for what you're doing, and who cares if you're qualified? Nobody's qualified for anything. We're all just making it up. <laughs> realize that? We're all just making it up, and it depends on our emotional state of the day if we're going to do a good job. But in 2012, I had my heart checked. Are you actually going to do the right thing? And a lot of times, I think God lets that happen so that you know. He already freaking knows. But so that you know what's really in there. In your dark hours, are you going to do the right thing by your investors? Are you going to do the right thing by the people who believed in you? doesn't mean it's going to go perfect, but in that dark hour, are you going to do the right thing? And you always have the opportunity to step up or step out. I believe this is a group of women that are going to step up. And if you're not, I challenge all of you to kick each other's butts and make them step up. We don't need any wimps in here, all right? So five months later, again, I thought I lost everything. But five months later, my company was five times bigger. Because once you go through horrific pain like that, you realize, I'm probably not going to go through that again. 
Here's the systems. Again, instead of getting lost in the disappointment, which knocks a lot of us out of the game, I chose to create systems and templates, systems and templates, systems and templates. Boom, boom, boom. How do we make sure we're organized enough to not allow that to happen? So in 2013, again, I had been working to flip houses, and I'm building this business. I'm pretty successful now. And I went, to, I went back to Africa, I went with my mentor, and I was on my way, and I, um, I looked at my best friend and I said, I don't have any skills. What am I gonna do? Flip my mud hut? Like, I, I can't, what is my, my house flipping skills don't translate to what I really wanna do. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I've kind of been pissed at God for almost 10 years now. Like, that, why would you put me in business when I wanna be there, when I wanna be out there in the world like saving babies? I've been annoyed all this time. I'll, I'll tell y'all the answer to that later. But I didn't understand that I was actually learning something that was really going to be the way that I impact nations. So I go to Africa thinking I'm unqualified, thinking I don't have any skills, and I see that this orphanage that is self-sustainable. Um, it was a group of business guys that put this together, and they bought enough land to have a cow farm, chicken farm, vegetable garden, feed the kids, sell the rest in the marketplace, cover overhead. And I was like, genius. And so we go to the next site, and I, again, thinking I had no skills, constantly focused. My God, so insecure all the time. It's so annoying. I don't know if anybody else feels these things, but it's probably just me. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I go to the next orphanage site, and I help them do the land deal. Then I help them do the site plan. And then I help them come up with the architectural plans to recreate a family environment versus warehousing children. And then I help them do the market study on what kind of foods and businesses should we have on the site to where it really isn't destroying the marketplace locally. And at that moment, I learned that business can be one of the most incredible tools for change that you could ever be given. So for those of you in here with bleeding hearts, please pay attention for what you're being trained for and understanding that nothing is wasted. Every single thing you do, every single thing you learn, has the ability to create change. And it's so interesting how it applies later. So in 2013, again, that second orphanage site was, <clears throat> was in an area that people were selling their kids for $25. I mean, they're little two-year-old babies. And I can't imagine how desperate your situation has to be to do something like that. But because we tied up this land and we started planning it, we came back a year later and I realized, holy crap. This horrible area that had nothing going on, no opportunity, is now the most thriving economy in this entire region. Why? Because they thought, well, the so-and-sos are investing in it. It could be Americans, Canadians, it doesn't matter. But these people are investing in this area, so it probably is worth something. That's what the locals thought. And so they started buying up all the land around it, put in all these businesses, and now it's booming. And that's when it hit me. You could use real estate development to create hope in hopeless places. So I started tying up bigger pieces of land and saying, all right, I'm super impatient. I don't know if anybody else is impatient. I'm impatient. But I try to take all the horrible things about me and make it work for me. Again, I don't get lost in this abyss of, eh, I suck. No, make it work for you. So I'm impatient. It's who I am. <clears throat> it's fine. If I'm impatient and I want everything in my life to matter, I want to have purpose and meaning every day, then how can I make my business itself be more impactful? I started really challenging myself, and I want to challenge you because there's so many interesting creative opportunities that you're probably not thinking about. I love the rose. I love what you're doing. That's amazing that you guys create that opportunity for people that don't have it. So look at your business and ask yourself, what can we do to give back? And again, don't kill your business doing it. Give proportionally. That's a writer downer. Give proportionally. And then your team will realize as you become more successful, you can give at an exponential level. Is this hitting home with anybody? So we started tying up bigger pieces of land and I said, what kind of social needs can we address with a piece of dirt? So we did what all good millennials do. And with our profound wisdom, we Googled. <laughs> Top needs, 
for Tennessee. And it was, uh, num- we were number four in the nation was one of them for highest rating of obesity-related diseases. And we realized that maybe we could create a development that allowed people to have access to health and fitness and a, a wellness lifestyle because it just wasn't important to Tennessee at the time. And so we created the first health and wellness community in Nashville. Uh, again, since I've got tons of properties, I've got over 50 acres of urban land in Nashville, and each one is addressing different social needs. We've got um, affordable artist communities. We've got, I mean, it's just really exciting. Um, but it took that question of impatience of, I want to live my purpose now. And my purpose, I defined really early on, is helping people. So how can everything in my life help people? So my vision long term is I want to develop third world countries. Small goals. <laughs> but I realize that I can use my skill set of real estate development to bring hope to hopeless places. And I can answer that question I had back in 2006. I can create jobs so that they don't have those same emergency poverty needs so that they don't have to sell their kids into sex slavery. And the thing that kept me awake the most was in 2017, I was in Costa Rica on another frustrating mission trip. And we did a women's conference. And at the very end, we were praying over everybody, and I asked this little girl her name. And she couldn't tell me. So I asked the translator, I said, why can't you tell me her name? And um, I found out that at, as an infant, her vocal cords were destroyed um, by her father, sexually abusing her, and um, she couldn't speak. So obviously I was pissed, which is a great thing, we've all decided. And I wanted to go kill this guy, because that's logical. And then I realized that she wasn't the only one. This was not only um, something that happened to her, but this was socially acceptable in this area and that one out of every four babies were dying um, before they turned one from their parent, breaking them in. And so I went back to my tent, and I got on my knees, and I said, God, whatever it looks like, I want to be the one that comes back and does something about this. I could have been that little girl. You could have been that little girl. And based on the sheer amount of resources we have access to, if we just try, we can do something about some of the world's worst issues. And we're so blessed that that wasn't us, but it could have been someone in this room, I don't even know, and I'm glad you're here. So that is why I want to develop third world countries. And that is why I'm going to die trying to develop third world countries. And that is why I have built five companies so that we can do that crap. All right? So I've been asking God forever. I'm like, all right, how do you really get from where I am now? I'm pretty practical. And how do I get from where I am now to actually developing third world countries? So again, I've been practicing in my own backyard. I I purposely take the worst areas and make them... Uh, the fastest appreciating areas in all of Nashville, which has been a very weird and very difficult choice. Along the journey, again, I had to put people in jail. I, I get rid of people's drug dealers. Um, I've been attacked multiple times. I've had thousands of haters. I've been sued seven times. I don't know, a bunch of other crap. It's been great. <laughs> and uh, the reason I haven't quit is because I remember the look in that little girl's eyes. And that was a dark, hopeless look she can't do anything about her situation, but I could. I don't really know the plan, and I'm okay with that. One of my greatest gifts and why I'm successful is I know that I don't have to have it all figured out. I know the end, and I know the next step, and I'm okay with that. And I would say that 99.9% of the women that I know that aren't reaching their capacity are hung up on having it all figured out. You don't freaking know. You don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. You don't know what hurricanes are going to hit tomorrow. You don't know. Life changes. We do our best. And then you've got to remember that little voice that says, recalculating. (laughs) So just keep making plans. And keep making plans and keep making plans. It's fine. Get over it. So I figured out in order to develop nations, you can't do this alone. 
So I should probably find a place that can gather the greatest minds in the world to come together to solve these issues. I've been to Haiti, I've been, I've been all over the world, and no one person can do it, but if you can unite minds, then we can tag team this crap. So number one, again, these are the three keys to conquering anything. Know thine why. Knowing thine why, again, gives you your purpose and the strength to overcome any obstacles. Again, every time I wanted to quit, which has been actually every single day for 10 years, I'm not kidding, it sounds sarcastic, I'm not kidding. A lot of people are just more motivated than I am, I think. But every day, I have at least one moment where I want, I'm like, this is, this is just not worth it. But then I remember that little girl, and I know my why. I know I can do it, so keep your why in front of you. It gives you that push when you can't push yourself, especially for women. We will do anything for our children, but we won't do it for ourselves. So just hack that system and work it. Know it's a thing. Uh, when your why is clear again, the how becomes easy. So 2016, I win Forbes' sixth fastest growing woman-owned company in the world and number three in the nation with Fortune, something cool like that. Lots of awards, I've got a team that I love and everything seems to be going great. <laughs> and then <laughs> I get the opportunity to level up. And I don't know why bad things happen to good people. I don't really care because we'll figure it out someday. But I can tell you that it's not about the bad thing that happens to you. It's, of course, what you do with it. It's really hard to not get lost in that disappointment. But I'm going to tell you all how to survive and thrive. Um, so the way that you can remember what matters and not get knocked the freak out of the game is to create the habits, form those habits around you to keep you on track. Y'all ready for these habits? Awesome. So this is my Women's Presidents Organization, and you can see Kathy over there in the blue. Uh, one of the most important things is to remember to only listen to people you want to be like especially those of you who are just starting a business out. There's a lot of people who are going to talk to you, which sounds like love, because they're protecting you. But only listen to people you want to be like. You're not going to be a jerk to those people. Just don't actually turn it into something you act on. Okay? Only listen to people you want to be like, and in that specific area, because they might have a horrible um, business, but a great marriage. Listen to their marriage advice. They might be amazing at accounting, but terrible at marketing. Some of their accounting advice. Every human on earth is going to let you down. So pick and choose which parts you choose to apply to your life instead of living in the disappointment that they're not perfect. Guess what? They're not perfect. So don't let it ruin it for you. Just assume, okay? Um, I, I think in the tornado of chaos and confusion and not wanting to go on, I don't know if anybody else felt that before. You don't have to raise your hand. But in that tornado of pain, in your darkest hour, um, you forget a lot of things and you get confused. And so it's super important to monitor your environment. How do you put things around you to keep you awake? I recommend you do this not in your darkest hour. I recommend you do this at your good times. That's why I named my company Ariel. It's about keeping the big picture in mind. It's remembering this is not just about you. It's about take yourself out of the situation and remember the big picture. So little things, how do, you, how do you trick your subconscious? Subliminal messages with the name, pictures, every single picture on all my walls is intentional, the books I listen to, the people I hang out with, the clothes I wear, the music I listen to, everything becomes intentional. Um, surround yourself with people who hold you accountable to your potential. Everybody in this room has that friend that they call up to talk crap to, right? Thank you, a few people are getting this stuff. Y'all, loosen up, come on. Everybody has that friend, and everybody has that friend that will allow you to feel like a victim. And I wanna warn you, especially in those dark times, to not spend your time with that person. Spend your time with women in this room who, instead of feeling sorry for you, will say who you are and pull you back. Say, this is not who you are, get off. 
<laughs> and get it back to work. You have a lot of people to help. You're not a pathetic loser. It doesn't matter what he, she, da, 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 says. It doesn't matter. Because you are an incredible person. Now get your crap together and get back up. You gotta have those people. If not, you have those warriors. They love you. But they're not the people that are gonna help you be everything you can be. You still get to love them, but they don't get to speak into your being. All right? And realize that whatever you focus on expands. I'll just let y'all think about that one. Number three, perseverance. So we've got faith, action, and perseverance. The three ways that if you remember those things, you can conquer anything. I've met a lot of women who are really angry when they make it. Women in business has not been a, a, around for forever. Okay? Definitely not as long as men in business. So we're still paving the way. We're still figuring it out. So naturally, let's be uh, common sense about this. Not everybody's going to believe we can do it. Seem pretty practical? We have to share what the freak we're doing and let them see that we're good at it. So instead of being angry at the people who don't believe in you, just focus on why you started, realize they were never part of that, and when you die, it's between you and God. Not you and your husband, not you and your best friend, not you and the boss, not you and some mentor, parent, doesn't matter. What did you do with your one chance on earth? Am I doing on time? Great, thanks. Okay, great. Awesome. All right, we're going to go rapid fire. Your pain can easily become your purpose. And that's not about using your pain to become a victim. But um, I actually had a lot of weird guilt. I, I did get divorced, and I had a lot of really weird, horrible guilt. Because I'm a Christian, and I didn't think this was okay. And I sat down. I'm not getting in that debate with y'all. But um, I sat down with somebody, and they said, instead of looking, feeling like you have this scarlet letter on, Realize that you overcame something. You stood up against abuse. And that everything you learned can actually be a badge of, of overcoming. And you can now set other people free. That this is not something a, lover, a loving father would want for his daughter. This is not okay what a provider, protector, person in your life is supposed to speak over you. This is not, you know, um, so whatever your pain is, be it you've been raped, be it you've been... Um, in a lot of pain through your business career, be it you've lost someone really important, whatever that is, the sheer fact that you're alive right now means you could probably write a five-step book on how to overcome whatever that was. And so realize that you can help a lot of people with what you've come through and keep going through it. Don't get, don't get lost in it. Okay? Everything that's happened to you serves you, blesses you, it does not define you as a messed up person. Okay? Um, a lot of times you've been allowed, especially in the beginning of business, to go through something really hard to trick you so that you can think you can overcome the next really hard thing. Because you look back and you're like, oh, well, if I got over that, then I can overcome this. And so a lot of those things, again, the obstacles, is not God shutting the door. It's giving you the strength to keep climbing, to overcome things, so that you can look back and be like, ah, well. Also, without that muscle, you'll never be able to stand at the top when the haters come out. And nobody wants to be a person of influence that can't handle the haters. If you're not strong, you're going to get knocked the freak out of the game. All of this is to prepare you for your good. All right, this is just a fun fact. I'm going to run through it really fast, but I love this. So everything that you run to in your darkest hour is everything you have to overcome to go to the next level. For example, if you're running to food, then you have to overcome that. If you're running to Instagram, if you're running to boys, if you're running to whatever it is that you are running to when you get that anxious feeling, that is just write it down. I'm big into lists. Write that list down and realize, nah, gotta let go of that, 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 that to exist and create at that next level. You can choose whatever level you go to. You can limit yourself. Um, one of the best things to remember is that this too shall pass. No matter what it is, it could take five years, but it's going to be over. It's going to be over. Um, so keep remembering that. Uh, we already talked about at the end of your life, it's between you and God. That's it. Nobody else, no matter how important they seem in your life, everybody's just a great addition 
for as long as they're nice, when they're nice. So just love them and realize they're not perfect. After all of this, I want to remind you that it is worth it. I formed a nonprofit and have gone to the British Virgin Islands uh, every single month almost for a week at a time. And I used my media production company to create a documentary and a web series to um, help the com country recover, which has been incredible. Uh, this is Callie, my sister. She's been working with me since she was 14. She runs Ariel Produced, that media production company, and her very first film uh, that she did, again, we had no idea what we were doing at the time, was promoted by Richard Branson and has reached millions of people. It's incredible what you do when you step up. So amongst my, in my darkest hour, instead of wallowing and totally giving up on myself, which is exactly what I felt like doing. Side note. Women have intuition, so we feel like what we feel is something we should continue to invest in. I just want to tell you that's not necessarily true. Just because you feel it does not mean you need to act on it, which is why you need to know your why, because if your feeling doesn't line up with the actions to get to your why, you should probably drop it. Okay? So even though you feel unqualified, and there's no reason you should show up four days after a hurricane, and there's prisoners running around killing people, and you don't know what you're doing, you show up. You show up and you help because that's what you know to do. My family loves me. I've got the best team I've ever had. My company's doing great. We're still rebuilding, you know? Everything's a process. And I am walking in more joy and more happiness and more confidence and strength than I ever have before because my foundation is in the right place. I know that no matter how close a person is to me, they do not get to speak into my identity. Only God does. Every human has a limited perspective. They only know what they've seen before and who you are today. They have no idea what's going to happen in the future. So it is worth it. You continue to overcome. And you'll use every lesson that you learn, if you so choose, to free someone else from the darkness that you've already had to overcome. And you can share one piece of advice with them that may be the, changer, the game changer for their life. In the last two months, I've had three different women tell me that they would have committed suicide the next day had I not been able to speak to them. So sometimes you're going through something that's not just for you. And remember that. Be willing to share. Have each other's back and kick each other's butts. This is just a summary of some of the impact my companies have had. It's worth it. Keep going. Um, remember that nothing is wasted. I was so upset last year that everything I built was gone. And I had to keep remembering, God will somehow use this. God will somehow use this. And it's so crazy that everything I thought was gone was actually being protected from. And now the timing is right for certain things. So the two things that kept me going was remembering nothing is wasted and this will all work out for my good. And it's so beautiful that less than a year later I get to see that. Again, if you are in this room, you have the incredible capacity to create impact for others. If you so choose, you could just do nothing. But that's your choice and your one chance on earth. No pressure. <laughs> so the three keys again, faith, action, and perseverance. Without those, you're not going to overcome everything. But with those, you can. This is my last quick tip is how to find your why. I've had a lot of people come to me and say, I don't know my why. All right, write your eulogy. What's powerful about that? All you gotta do is, what do you want them to say about you when you're dead? It's pretty easy. When you're writing that, all the BS goes away and what is important rises to the surface. That is my top advice and that's actually how I start any of my classes. Thank you again for having me. I'd love to stay in contact with all of you. Those are my Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all those handles. Uh, Instagramming me is actually the best way to get in touch with me. Um, but I hope that you got something out of my story. I bless you all, and thank you for having me.